just I'll just start talking about the guys you know that, that we were able to sign. Start first with the with the staff. I thought they did an unbelievable job. Um, you know, JT, Josh, Patterson, um, Jalen Moore, and then the addition of um, Todd McShane. They came in and, and were really able to rebuild this class of high school guys in a short amount of time and doing it with quality. Um, you know, starting first with Saladin, Ala, uh, just a great, great running back. Um, Todd brought him in. He had tracked him in his time at Northwestern. Um, the first thing he did when he got here was was bring up this kid. We watched his film, um, explosive, um, really great change of direction, and, and then brought him up here. And what an amazing kid and family, and just fit our culture, fit what we were looking for. Um, you know, Exodus Ayers, defensive back, uh, has been with us, committed to us for a long time, um, and just really talented, long, like what we like in the back end. And our secondary here plays the way we want them to play. Um, and, and has stayed committed to us through, you know, people trying to flip him, which has been great. Um, very, very loyal kid. We're, we're excited about him. Dexter Foster, inside linebacker from, from Central Catholic up in Portland. Um, just really raw and talented. Um, he's got a huge, huge upside and ceiling to him that, that I'm excited for him to get here and get to work. Um, he's been great too, committed to us for a long time, excited about him. Jairis Goodman, you know, an inside linebacker at a community college up in Garden City. Just a really talented, really talented, well put together. Um, again, same thing, brought him up here, got to meet him, got to know him. Really good young man that's going to add a lot of value to this team, not only as a player, but, but in our locker room, which is what we're looking for with all these guys. You know, and then Callum Gutridge, the quarterback out of Wilsonville. Um, short notice for him, but uh, Coach Gunnerson really liked him. We watched his film, really liked he has the athleticism to make plays, but also is, is a real strong thrower. Um, and then same thing, getting to meet his family, getting to meet him, the person he is, really going to add add to that quarterback room. Cornell Hatcher was another guy that, that we had kind of earmarked, that we liked, um, even before the whole staff change, and then really dove back into him when – when we had some room at running back and same thing, real explosive, real productive, um, really like what we see on film from him. And then same thing, that who he is as a person with all these guys, that's a big part of what we're looking for. Not only talent, but you know, how are they wired? Do they fit what we want in that locker room? Do they fit the way they play? Um, and these guys do. Uh, Will Haverland, you know, outside linebacker from Eugene, you know, Sheldon High School up in Eugene. Same thing. He's been in our camps. We've known about him for a long time. He was a guy we were always kind of looking at and just really dove back into him. You know, when I when I got the job here and, and he brings a lot of value, sending tough, hard work and athletic, really long, really long. He's not done growing by any means. So excited about him and then Adam Hawks, uh, good young offensive lineman that's really grown. You look at where he was a year ago. Um, just in size and stature to where he is now. I mean, a guy that's on the uptrend in his development. He's not tapped out anywhere near it um, and adds some size and athleticism to him. And we're excited about that. Coach Devan did a great job with him. And then Shamar, uh, outside linebacker from Florida, just really talented, um, long, athletic, fits what we're looking for in the edge. The Chatfields, um, the guys like that, has that explosiveness, ability to get to the quarterback which we want me to continue to be our trademark here at Oregon State. And then Dylan Sikorsky, again, offensive lineman, great size, um, tough, but also moves really well. So we're, that's the group for us. We're really excited about the young players we've been able to add um, and looking forward to their future and development here. But excited about what we were able to do really in a short amount of time and kind of rebuild that thing, but rebuild it with, with quality and, and, in my opinion, upgraded in a lot of areas and excited about that. Questions? Are any of these, are any of these uh, 10 going to be um, graduate early and, and enroll in January? Uh, there will be, yes, there will be a couple. Um, you know, obviously Goodman will be here. Uh, he'll be here in January. Uh, Exodus will be here in January. Okay. Yep. Um, the, the next signing period, where, how important is that for you? Are you looking at quite a few for that class, for that, that group? Or, or? Yeah, continuing to look at where we need to add both older guys and younger guys. Um, that was, we just went through that. That's, that. that was a big thing when we were doing this is learning really from lessons learned from the first time we got to Oregon State six years ago. You don't panic about the first signing day. Make sure it's the right guys, the right kids, and don't just take guys because you feel you got to fill needs or just fill spots on the board. 
Um, and that's what we did. We weren't, we weren't looking to take, we, we were fine if we took a small number, but we were able to get some of these guys that we thought had added great value. And we got 10 really good ones that we feel are gonna have great futures here. And then as the, as the portal continues to evolve mm -hmm. and become a bigger piece for everybody, how, how important are the signing classes in terms, I know you wanna get these high school kids, but where are you at on, in terms of you know, balancing those two now? Yeah, and this year is going to be a little bit different than years past as far as we'll take more portal, portal guys than we probably will in a normal year just because of the turnover, guys leaving, um, you know, threat of guys getting poached. Um, so it'll be a little bit heavier that way this year. But, it, but in general, we're still going to be a place of development with high school and junior college guys. That's got to be our core guys that are going to be in the program for a long period of time. That's how you build a culture. If it's just guys jumping in for one year and out, one year and out, I mean, you see it across the country with teams that do that, that there's nothing, there, there's no substance there. We don't want to be that program. We want to be a program of substance and culture. And so we got to do it with guys that are going to develop over a long period of time and then fit holes as we need to, depending on the depth chart that, or the you know roster that year. Couple for you, coach. Uh, first and foremost, you guys have been through a lot in the last month. How does it feel to get here to your first signing day as a head coach and start to talk about the future of Oregon State. It's, it's, it feels great. And again, knowing who we've added to this thing, um, just the, the short time I've been with this whole staff and the work that they've done and, and the, the diligence and, and effort that they show and the, how they recruit. Um, these guys are great recruiters. They work extremely hard. Seeing that was very energizing. And then seeing the guys that they brought to my attention, you know, think it, you know, uh, there's a number of guys here that weren't on our radar before that new staff got here. And the quality of player and person that they brought gives me real hope for the future. You said you went a Will hard once he got the job. What really popped out about Will, maybe aside from the measurables that people at home don't get to see every Friday night, and then how important is it to keeping the Oregon talent here in Oregon three of them on the list today from within the state? Yeah, I think it's very important. I think that there's a little bit more investment with guys that grew up knowing this program, want to be a part of this program. Uh, Will's another one of those. He, he always had the measurables and we always really liked him. I think it just fell back early on. Sometimes you get enamored with guys from far away, like they add more value, but you go back to what's really important and that's, you know, how does he play the game? Um, you know, what does he have development left in him? Is he tapped out? He's nowhere near tapped out. And he's got great frame and stature to, to continue to grow. So, you know, you will kind of want to get those guys that are on the rise and you can develop rather than they're peaked in high school. And he's one of those guys that he's just scratching the surface of what he can become. A um, couple of things. You talked about the portal and then building. Do you find with the portal that maybe there are some overlooked guys that are maybe perhaps are mm -hmm. There's no question. Um, so many teams are so portal heavy. There's a lot of guys that, that do get overlooked or are going, you know, I look at Saladin, he, he's going to Sam Houston State originally. Like this guy's an extremely big town that was kind of overlooked and f for whatever reason, but then you get him up here and, and you expect him to be small and he's not. Like I remember when we were down taking the photos, I was like, oh God, he's put together and saying that to our running back coach. And so yeah, there, there's guys like that because they're just, there's not as much emphasis on high school recruiting across the country. Also then, um, Saladin had a tie mm -hmm. with former B of Kendall Hill. Mm -hmm. um, running back, the other running, Cornell Hatcher's uncle yep. played at Oregon State. Did that come into play at all or did you guys even know about that when you? I knew about Cornell. Cornell. Um, I knew about that, but I didn't know, I didn't know about uh, the Kendall Hill connection until he was up on the trip, which was fun to Fun to find out. We we're just uh, walking together. I said, "Hey, Kendall said to say hi." I was like, oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, Kendall, been a while. Kendall reached out to me and just talked about what an amazing kid he is. So, yeah. um, and then, last question: You have some transfer portal guys that have committed. Mm -hmm. Are you expecting those guys to all be here in January? Most, yes. What at, at this point, knowing what you have on the roster, what are the most important positions that you need to need to fill either through the portal or this next? group of signings. Yeah, we're, we're going to look to continue to add to the quarterback room where we had we had some departures. Um, and then the, the tight end room, same thing. There's been some departures and, and really the defensive backfield. Um, those, those are kind of the three big ones that we got to immediately add guys to. And then every position we kind of looking at, you know, we're going to add a guy here or there to, to fill some spots of guys that are taking off. Yeah.
What, what have been the challenges to hold on to some of your guys on the roster? Well, the challenge is, you know, everything's happening behind your back. Um, luckily, luckily or unluckily, I know about the stuff because we got great kids and they're pretty upfront and honest about what's going on with them. So, but it, that's really it. You know, they're getting called all the time. You never know day to day, you know, what their situation looks like. So it's just, it makes it, it makes it tough, but I mean, you got to just fight through it and continue to keep your relationships with your own players as you continue to work to add to, to the program. And belief in me and where we're going, where we're trying to go with this thing is it's, I'm very grateful is the best way to say it. Yeah.